Hello everybody and welcome to Outdoors Britain. In this episode, yep, you guessed it, we're heading on down to my golf course permission to see if we can bag a few bunnies for the pot. Uh, in case you can't already tell, uh, we're not in the Outdoors Britain car. We're actually in uh, Mrs. Outdoors Britain's car because my poor old golf has blown its gearbox up. So uh, until I can get that sorted out, we are uh, we're borrowing Mrs. Outdoors Britain's car. And it's a little bit smaller inside, so uh, this might be a bit of a challenge to film. But we're going to muddle on through anyway. See you when we get there. And we've landed at the golf course. Now, first things first, shut the roof because it's freezing. Doesn't take a minute. Sorted. Right now, I've just been round and had a look in the uh, the main car park at the uh, clubhouse, and um, there's still quite a lot of cars there. So uh, I think the safest thing we can do is uh, follow the usual procedure and uh, lock the car up and go and have a little wander and uh, see if there's anybody still playing golf on this side. See you in a bit. Is that the horse still up there? Have a look, see if we can zoom in. Nope. Nope. Just my bad eyesight. Right. I've got a funny feeling there is still people playing golf. Because I think I can hear them. But we won't know for sure until we have a proper look but instead of walking up and over the brow of this hill and uh, straight out onto the last green we're actually going to follow the public footpath that cuts across this bit because I don't fancy getting hit by a golf ball oh woodies they're not on our list. God, I'm getting unfit. Nearly. <sighs> 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 Nearly there. We made it. And it looks like they're still playing down there. Got focus. Yep. Right. They shouldn't be much longer. But it does mean, it does mean, sorry, excuse me, puffing and panting. I'm not as young as I used to be. It does mean that where they are, they've got one, two, three more greens to go. So, I think the best thing we can do is head on back down to the car. 
and uh, wait till they finished. I don't know if the sound has picked up on the camera, it probably has, but it's quite a bit windier than what was forecast. So I'm hoping that it's gonna drop off before we need to get started. Anyway, enough of my rambling. I'm back to the car for a brew. <laughs> right, we are back at the car. Now, some of you uh, longer standing subscribers might remember quite a while ago how upset I was about the uh, lid for my old flask going missing, which rendered it useless. Well, I'm really, really happy to say that I have finally, yes, finally got a replacement flask. And here it is. Yeah, it's a big one. It holds 1.8 litres. It's got two, hang on if I can just get them off. It's got two half decent size cups. Not that I need to, but you know, should I ever be with someone that also wants a brew, they can have one as well. And uh, same as my old flask, it is, uh, it's a glass one. It's, you know, so it's glass inside the uh, plastic body and it's got a usual sort of plastic lid and uh, this is its first test and I brought it from my local Asda supermarket for seven pounds yes that's right seven pounds so it wasn't expensive so uh, yeah I'm I'm curious to see how it does um, I don't know if I just said it holds 1.8 litres or not I have filled it with 1.8 litres of coffee although I'm not going to drink 1.8 litres of coffee tonight I just filled it all the way up just to see how it performs while we're out tonight it said it's it keeps uh, hot things hot for 12 hours and cold things cold for 24 hours so uh, yeah let's see what the first brew's like also I will add I could have brought a new flask already by now but every flask I looked at had one of those weird little lids where you sort of press the button in the middle and the the thing sort of pops up and then you pour your coffee through it but every flask I've ever seen like that you can't seem to take it apart to clean it properly all you can do is just sort of flush it through which to be honest that's I don't really like the sound of that in terms of uh, you know sort of like bacteria and cleanliness and things you know I prefer just a normal lid like that that you just take on and off anyway enough of my rambling Let's get this brew poured. Oh, that is a good sized cup. Bigger than the cup on my old flask. Right, now unfortunately, Mrs. Outdoors Britain's car doesn't actually have a drink holder. So I'm going to balance this very precariously on the dashboard, out of shot. And put the lid back on. Like that. Can go back on there like that. And go down there, out of the way. Right, let's see if it stayed hot. Well, it certainly smells like a flask brew. Not that that bothers me. Oh, lovely. That is just as hot as it was when I made it at home. And it, it's an hour's drive to get to this permission as well. So, so far, it's all good. Also, I will add, I wasn't sure how many spoons of coffee to put in a 1.8 litre flask. Only, uh, I sort of guessed, nine nine spoons of coffee and uh, I don't know if you can see but I think that was just about right anyway I'm not gonna sit here and ramble rubbish while I'm drinking it so uh, yeah see you in a bit right sit rep I've now finished my brew and uh, I've had a target out check my zero it was slightly off so 
it's had a small adjustment and uh, it's back on where it should be so I'm happy with that and I'm now suited and booted I'm about to head on out and see if I can't bag one or two in this last bit of daylight so hopefully hopefully fingers crossed the next bit of footage you see will be on the pod see you in a bit And back to the car for a well-earned brew. Oh, I'm really, really, really pleased to get that one in daylight because uh, like I've said in other videos, it really, really doesn't happen very often. So one in daylight is always a bonus. And uh, as you saw, it's a nice easy shot, right on zero. I think it was just a touch under 30 yards. And then that second one, was an excellent shot that was uh, I can't remember exactly without looking at the footage but I think it was about 41 42 yards so only a little bit of holdover for that one and then uh, that third one was about five or ten minutes ago from uh, from the first one I come to when I go off on my uh, lap but obviously it's the last one I come to on the way back from doing a lap yeah again I think it was was it about two two and a half yards ish roughly so yeah just about on zero I'm really really pleased to get them well this coffee is still really really hot so that flask is definitely doing the business now I'm not ashamed to say I have made a bit of a schoolboy error this time round I, uh, I actually forgot to bring the game bag so what I've had to do is if I can find the right one I've had to hock all these rabbits together and carry them and uh, I'm leaving them outside the car for now because one of them's a bit of a flea bag so I do not want them getting in Mrs Outdoors Britain's car she will not be happy but it's okay I've got plenty of plastic bags I can I can wrap them in for the way home but they can just stay on the floor where they are for now but to be honest I thought tonight was going to be one of those uh, one of those really difficult sort of disaster nights because I went round and when I got that first one in daylight I started heading over to uh, the next Warren and there was somebody still playing golf but I'm not sure if he was actually a club member or not because he had two dogs with him 
and he had his dogs running up and down while he was uh, playing golf and uh, just by sort of watching him from up on a bank I noticed he didn't actually finish the course he just sort of disappeared off so he might just be somebody local having a cheeky round for free after the uh, golf had finished who knows I did my best to avoid him just for sort of safety's sake and uh, then I went heading off over to another warren I wanted to try and hit tonight and there was somebody sitting there sitting there puffing away on one of those vape things so yeah I was starting to think that tonight was going to be a bit of a disaster but it's actually turned into a pretty fantastic one considering I've only done one lap only uh, once I've drank this coffee I am going to call it quits and head for home because uh, I've got a little something else in store sorry in store this video and obviously a, a drama scotch to do as well and I don't think it's fair on Mrs Outdoors Britain to be up all night butchering rabbits <sighs> right see you in a bit and I'm home now normally I would uh, sort of show you the rabbits gutted and skinned and uh, awaiting butchering by the beautiful Mrs Outdoors Britain but tonight Mrs Outdoors Britain has already uh, butchered those uh, three rabbits because she needed to get get them done in double quick time because the newest member of the Outdoors Britain team was born a week ago and needed a feed Please welcome to the world Outdoors Britain baby number two. Hey. <laughs> right, that's the introduction to the newest member of the team done. Now, on to tonight's dram. This time we have Wolfburn. It is uh, 10 years old and it's 46% uh, ABV. Location, Thurso, Caithness. Age, 10. Cask, Oloroso. Whiskey info, a 10 year old release is a significant milestone for a new distillery. And since Wolfburn itself is only 11 years old, we can be assured that this whiskey contains some of the first spirit made here. A full maturation term in second fill sherry casks has produced a delightfully fruity and elegant whiskey. Tastes like raisin, ginger and caramel donut. And it's great with chocolate truffles, shortbread and Rob Roy cocktail. Well, I don't have any of those things, so we're going to be trying it on its own. I'll just give you a little look at the card focus just about now onto the pouch or dram should I say and into the glass bit of colour to it. it. Smells nice. Well, cheers. Wow. That's definitely 46%. <clears throat> and uh, I can certainly taste the uh, Raisin and ginger, but I'm not too sure about the caramel donut. Well, I 
yeah I'm not so sure about the caramel donut but I can certainly taste that raisin and ginger now in fact that is actually a very very nice dram so if you ever get the opportunity to try a wolf burn I definitely recommend it in fact I definitely recommend signing up to uh, a whiskey me subscription because like I've said before you get to try so many different whiskies and not just scotch but also they do whisky small around the world too anyway enough of my rambling I'm going to finish my dram I really hope you've enjoyed this video that is the end thank you for watching Ready? Oh, good girl. High five. Yeah. Poor. <laughs> Don't touch me with the drawers. Oh, good doggies. You love a bit of bunny, don't you?